Hey guys, welcome back to Heaven's uh, Entrepreneur's TV channel. I always get stumbled over those words, but you know what? I'm so, so excited again for my dear brother, Alexander Goldwing. Uh, guys, we have tons of announcements to explain to you today. But uh, before all of that, I would love to invite you to uh, communicate with us today. Okay, I want this to be a little bit of a Q&A as well. And so uh, Alexander Goldwing and myself will answer any questions that you would like, okay? And so because it's... Uh, an extra bonus day as well, okay? Um, we're just gonna play it a bit differently. So I have a couple of announcements to give to you. Um, with the upcoming Kingdom School that we have decided on, we're going to convert it a little bit, alrighty? So I'm going to send an email out and with an announcement saying what those changes necessarily are. But specifically, I'm going to give you a few options. We're going to convert it to the challenge instead. Right. And so those who have pre-registered already, I'm going to give you a couple of options. All right. There's going to be either you can do a one-on-one -on -one session with me uh, or you can jump into the VIP, right, straight off into the ch uh, for the challenge. Right. And it's going to be, I uh, think, five or seven days. And that's going to be different speakers as well uh, coming for that. And the challenge is going to be a phenomenal challenge. I'll tell you more about it. Or the final option is I can give you a complete refund, right? So if you don't want to jump into the challenge, we're still going to be talking about power and wealth and all of those cool stuff, but we're going to have quite a few other speakers. Um, but yeah, if you need to, please don't be afraid to ask for the refund because I will send an email out. I'll give you more um, uh, notifications and uh, information about that. Alrighty, guys. So today we are actually talking about unlocking generational wealth with them. Um, Mr. Alexander Golding. Again, yesterday we had him on. It was phenomenal. Oh my goodness. The presence of God was incredible. We had tons released over the people. Our hearts were healed. And I really believe today will be even better because the glory of God always grows from glory to glory. All right. So guys, please welcome on the stage with me, Mr. Alexander Golding. Hey brother, how are you doing? Hello, Kirshen. It's a pleasure to be here, brother. My friend, uh, uh, it was such a privilege having you yesterday, and uh, I'm super excited for today as well. Yeah. So uh, tell me, what's been God saying to you just this past day? What's, what's been that? First of all, I just want to tell you thank you for uh, having me back. I really appreciate it. And uh, wow, the anointing was so heavy. There mm. was there was so much glory. The room was full of glory. The anointing was so heavy. And uh Kirsten, honestly, I've just been praying for the people of God that mm. their hearts, their minds, their soul uh, would be ready for everything that God wants to make them pregnant with, everything that God wants to birth through his people into this, this realm. Amen. So good, man. So God was talk talking to me about something, and um, pretty much I want to ask, start by asking this question, which is, why is it so hard for a rich man to actually enter into the kingdom of God? There's a verse that says that uh, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And I know that it's not necessarily talking about the actual needle itself and the camel, big camel going through that. A needle is, for a camel is actually uh, like a contraption to get the camel to go through to mount certain things on it, right? So why is it easier for the camel to go through such a contraption than for us, or a rich man, I should say, <laughs> not for us, but a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? Wow. That mm. is a great question. Well, I tell you what, before I get there, let me just say a quick prayer over the people. If yeah, you don't mind. please do. Go, go ahead. Perfect. Start it off. Yep. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing right now. I thank you for everyone who's watching this broadcast. Thank you for the hand of God moving on the people, moving on the hearts of the people. Now, Lord, I thank you for your word, your will, and your way today. Thank you for being glorified. And may you, Father, give me the words. I yield myself to you, and I praise you and give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. Hallelujah. So, brother, you know, that's a really good question. And what we find, in fact, Jesus actually addresses this 
in a very succinct way. We see Jesus telling us to seek first the kingdom of God and mm-hmm. then all these things, right? The things that people strive after, the things that people want, all these things will then be added unto you. Mm-hmm. Now, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, the rich young ruler said, listen, I've followed the commandments. I've obeyed all the commands. I've done all these things. And Jesus said, great. There's only one thing that you need to do. Mm-hmm. Just sell the stuff that you have, give to the poor and follow me. But the rich young ruler left. He was downtrodden. He, he was depressed when he heard this news. Mm-hmm. But why? You see, the thing is, is that often we can become so attached to earthly riches, to mm-hmm. earthly wealth, and yeah. to the power that we perceive that that earthly wealth brings us. The power, yeah. the prestige, the reputation, and that comes back to the pride of life, right? Mm. And so that is that is one of the major reasons why it's so difficult for someone who could be very wealthy, but find it difficult to move into the kingdom of God. Because when we come into the kingdom of God, right? The only thing that should matter is the presence of the Lord. Wow. It's the presence of the Lord that we want with us Hmm. because God's presence is greater than riches, greater than any other power on earth. God's presence should be our main focus, our main Hmm. desire, and the one thing that we desire in our hearts above all else. You know, I just feel led to do something right now, right? So, um, of course, like when we say the presence of the Lord, what it really is as well is the king himself coming in, right? So if the manifestation of the king would come, he carries his atmospheric pressure with him or presence with him, all right? And so I really want that to happen right now. So let's just pray that come comes, okay? So Jesus... We just ask you to come in as the king of glory. We ask for your presence to come in right now, for the atmosphere to change, and we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to be in us and on us for your people. In your mighty name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I actually feel led to go into a totally different uh, path right now, if I should say that. So I just feel led to wait upon the Lord with you, brother. And everybody else right now, as you're listening, I'm just going to ask you to just pray with us. Just turn your attention to the Lord. Just be in adoration. Not just worship, but adoration of all that he is. Because I believe God's going to shift some things today. Yes, yes, yes. In your bloodlines. Mm. In your entire generations. And we just need to posture our heart to receive this. So you can only receive with your hands open and in a state of rest. So Holy Spirit, I ask for your righteousness, peace, and joy and your rest to fall upon people right now. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So literally say this with me, guys. I open my heart to receive renewing and refreshing. And the cleansing of my bloodline. And the cleansing of my bloodline. That the spirit of poverty may be broken off. That the spirit of poverty may be broken off. Thank you, Jesus. And the spirit of the Lord, and and the blessings of the Lord that makes one rich, may be added into my 
bloodline from this moment forward. The spirit of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord that makes one which will be added to my blood. Thank you, Jesus. We just open this realm up for each and every person in Jesus' name. So just keep your hearts open, my friends, because God's going to do some amazing, amazing surgery on us today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. How are you feeling? Feeling good? <laughs> All right. Great. Okay, man. So I, I really feel like going into a totally different tangent. That's the word, tangent right now. So my brother, before, as we're entering into this, and the presence of the Lord is going to come right now, talk to us a little bit, talk to us a little bit about what generational wealth actually means. Because it's not just finance, right? No. So tell us a little bit more. What has God shown you and given you revelation of? Well, when you say generational wealth, obviously we think about money and we think about finances. Hmm. But it's so much more than money and finances. You know, the word tells us that a good reputation is greater or better than uh, gold and silver, yeah. right? So what does that mean when we talk about a good reputation? That means a, really a good reputation before the Lord, hmm. being blameless before the Lord, having great character of honor and integrity before God. That's worth more than gold and silver. So when we talk about what is generational wealth beyond money, that's legacy, hmm. right? So we can look at the, the forefathers of the faith in the Old Testament. And in fact, we, we see it very clearly, right? We see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And this is a generation, not just of, of having wealth or having attained wealth, but there was a godly legacy that continued throughout the generation right? Even all the way through David. And we see this godly legacy because the word says, even though David, he wasn't perfect. Let's be honest here. He wasn't perfect, but the word says that he was a man after God's own heart. Hmm. And this, this is the key right here. Yeah. Is that we must be people after the heart of God. Wow. So when we become people who are after the heart of God, and that is the central thing that permeates our lives, hmm. then that is what carries over to our children and our children's children and creates a legacy of wealth, not just monetary wealth. Hmm. You know, right there, as you're saying this, there's, the, there's one secret that nobody catches, right? That Jesus is literally called the son of David, right? So let's just talk about this for a second. If I'm in the royal family and I'm there's a queen of England, whatever, if I'm his son, isn't that my inheritance as well and I have access to the vault? Don't I live That's in a right. palace too? Don't I live in a castle? So let's just talk about that for a second. Jesus is how many generations after David? Oh, gosh. Maybe now, now you're 14. Was it? I believe it was fourteen. Okay, right. let's, say it's that, right? let's say it's around that. I don't think the wealth disappeared. No, I think no. it followed the family line, right? Yes. Because they're still calling him son of David. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So all of that wealth that Solomon has accumulated, and then he's still so he got Joseph and he got Mary, right? And Joseph is known as the carpenter. Now, if yes. I if I said you know there's this electrician down the road. Everybody knows the electrician. There's only one, right? <laughs> if I say there's the carpenter, you know, yeah. Joseph the carpenter, everyone knows him. So obviously everyone knows that the stuff that he made, that he created, and I'm pretty sure that carpenters would have been very wealthy. I mean, you look at furniture and stuff these days, they, I'm pretty sure they earn quite a bit, right? And for a person to build like that, they must have had quite a bit of wealth. So straight away, we see, obviously, Jesus had wealth. He was yes. born into a family line of royalty, right? So 
what happened then? You got the Magi, you got the, the kings coming to him, bearing gifts. Yes. I'm pretty sure they have gold bars. How many people actually truly can say we have some gold bars? <laughs> Not many people can say that. <laughs> God, give us some. Come on. <laughs> okay, so if that's the case, he was pretty wealthy. Now, everybody says, like in the word it says, he, he was rich and he became poor for us. Yeah? So he left heaven, obviously even greater wealth, streets of gold. But at the same time, he was willing to become poor and leave his household. Yeah. Right? He left his household and he went traveling around with the guys. Yeah. Right. So that means that he left that, became lower, poorer in the eyes of everybody else to allow us to be elevated. You know, talk to us a little bit about what Holy Spirit is telling you, because I feel like he's rocking in some golden nuggets as well right now. Yeah. Well, you know, as you mentioned that, you know, I am just, I'm really thinking about what you said earlier, right? Mm -hmm. the, the fact that Jesus is the son of David, and we come from a royal line, because yeah. Jesus comes from that royal line. That's right. And so we have access to that. You know, Peter said that we now have a divine nature, that God has given us everything that we have need of and we are now partakers of that divine nature and by right that divine nature is full of the abundance of god because in that divine nature there is no lack whatsoever yeah. Yeah. and i'm just reminded you know that that when uh peter was passing by the lame man and he said silver and gold i don't have but such as i have I give to you, right? And then the man was healed and he leaped up, right? He was full yeah. of joy. He leaped up. He went running, skipping away, praising the Lord. And so this is the key. You may not have a gold bar right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you have something so much more powerful than that. And such as we have, yeah. this is what we ought to be giving, the riches of the kingdom. So good, man. Yeah, no, um, oh wow, I completely lost it. Oh, is this really okay? That's it. The, the talents and abilities that we have, right? God has given us the power and ability to attain wealth, right? But He hides it inside of ourselves, right? And so we have to put to use, put to work what we have. Now, we can ask God for money all day, right? But He's trying to say, I've given you the key go and make wealth through this key, right? And each of us actually carry a very unique key for the type of wealth God wants us to carry, right? And that's actually limited to ourselves, right? I believe that it's limited to how much work we want to put in and how much we want to get out of it, really. So in saying all of that, if we bury our talents, that means that it's not going to happen at all. Yeah. Right? So that's hidden, completely hidden. But now there's something called hidden riches that we can actually tap into. And that can come from a relationship with God, where we can hear a bit more about the secrets of God. And we can actually go out and take action upon that. You know, has there been anything like that, that God has shown you that you could use as a mysterious secret that you could call? Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if I would necessarily call it a, a mysterious secret. Again, it's, it's one of those things where I say, mm. you know, it's hidden in plain sight. Yeah. Right. So often we want to hold on to whatever we have, uh, to make life better, to do the things that we think or feel are necessary at the moment. Mm. And so sometimes when God calls us to give or God calls us to do something, it's difficult for us to let go of some of those things. Yeah. So beyond just maybe giving a tithe, beyond uh, giving uh, an offering or a pledge to a ministry or a donation or something like that, often God may call you to release something else. Um, let me just, I, I want to be sure that I, that I can share uh, what it is 
that I'm, I'm going to tell you. Hmm. I will share it. I will definitely share this. So there was a time several years ago, I was going through just an absolutely horrid situation. And I was like, Father, what, what is going on? And it had gotten so bad, Kirsch, yeah. that literally I had like, m- my, my wallet had pocket lint. In it. it was bad, like mm. zero, zilch. I and it. I can remember that mm. I was thinking to myself, Even in my bank account, I was like, how is my bank account still open at the time? I think I had like a dollar left in my bank account. (laughs) And I was like, Lord, where are you? What is going on? How how could all of this stuff happen? What's going on, Father? Hmm. Remember sitting in church and uh, we had just finished song service worship, what have you. And they were about to take up offering. And I thought, man, God, I wish I had something to give because I love to sow into the kingdom of God. I thought, man, I wish I had something to give. I know exactly. (laughs) Literally, all I had was like a dollar in my bank account. Yeah. So I couldn't even give that at church because it, it wasn't it wasn't on me. It was in my bank account. Right? Right, right. Well, that night uh, when they got ready to uh, mention offering, they said, "By the way, church, we just uh, created uh, a new option for giving. You can just uh, text to give, and it'll go straight to your bank account." Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, okay. And I heard clearly from the Lord, and it was like, did you mean what you just said? Did okay. you really mean? It? Uh, did you really mean if, if I could give it, I would? Hmm. And I was like, well, yeah. I gave that one dollar. Yeah. I gave that last dollar. And hmm. let me tell you what happened. Hmm. I gave that last dollar, and I went home and prayed. The next day, I heard some instruction from the Lord and within two weeks, I had fourteen hundred dollars in my pocket. Amen. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I'm here to tell you that when you are willing to release the little that you have mm-hmm. out of obedience to the Lord and follow the Lord's instruction, mm-hmm. because you know we have to have a posture of obedience. So when you are willing to release the little that you have out of obedience, not sensationalism, not emotionalism. Listen, no one was begging me for an offering. No one was telling me, you know, if you give your last, God's going to bless you. Yeah. None of that. None of that stuff. None of that. None of that junk. Right. Mm -hmm. There was no compelling or coercion anywhere. This was between me and God. And so when you make it personal, and it's between you and God, trust me, he's going to come through on his end. You don't have to worry about that. Mm. God is going to come through. It's amazing, man. You see, guys, this is what kingdom life is like. You know, um, who was it? Eli Regalado was on the other day, and he was talking about sowing constantly, sowing, sowing, sowing everywhere. And he had told me uh, something else, just one-on-one. He had said that um, the... Uh, the seed is like an ATM card. So when you sow the seed, you can expect a harvest back in the same manner that it came. Because each seed um, replicates itself after its own kind pretty much, right? And so just like an ATM card in the kingdom, when you're trying to get finance from the Lord, you give. And then in the process of the giving, the harvest comes. It's backwards in the kingdom. It's completely backwards. (laughs) You think you you should be just receiving or taking, but God needs you to activate that faith, right? He needs you to say, do you actually trust me? Are you willing to let go of this so I can give you the more? Are you willing to give somebody else so I can give you? 
because in the kingdom, wealth needs to circulate, has to flow. Anything stagnant is dead. That's right. Right? Anything stagnant is dead. But if it's flowing, then God can constantly supply because you're willing to bless another in the kingdom. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. So, guys, if hopefully you're catching that. If you're willing to bless another in the kingdom according to what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart, though, that's the key. You've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. Yes. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to sow, yeah, I'm going to sow, there, I'm going to sow, wherever. You also need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if he says, no, don't sow, there's a reason for that, too. Right? You know, talk to us about some of the bad experiences you had about, maybe if you've had <laughs> bad experiences around that. Have you had any? I, I haven't um, <laughs> because, because I really try, as you just said, yeah. to be mindful uh, of the Holy Spirit and just listen. Okay, yeah. Father, where do you want me to sow? Where <laughs> is this supposed to go? Yeah. To whom do you want me to re release this to? Yeah. Absolutely. That's good, man. See, I made so many mistakes. <laughs> You're not like me. <laughs> I made so many mistakes trying to listen. Where's your voice, God? You know, and eventually start to learn, start to learn. Okay, so guys, I want you to just pour out your heart right now. I want you to just ask any questions you have for me and my brother. Uh, we are still talking about generational wealth, but also just anything regarding uh, wealth as well. Anything to the kingdom that's a burning uh, heart desire right now. Any questions on your heart? Okay, feel free to just type in the chat. and uh, We would love to answer for you guys. Okay, my brother. So um, is there anything on your heart right now as we're waiting? For everybody to type in the question. Is there anything mm. like that the Lord has laid on your heart to speak about? Yeah, well, you know, you know, Christian, I think it's very essential that when we talk about wealth and we talk about obtaining wealth, mm. um, that first of all, we have to get rid of doubt. We've got mm. to move it, faith, right? Mm. So th that's a key, is that we have to move in faith. Right. We have to have faith in God's word, faith in who he is and faith in the Holy Spirit. We want to listen to the voice of the Lord and move in faith and trust that as we listen to the Lord, that as we are led by the Holy Spirit, that he will lead us and guide us and give us divine strategies. Amen. So if we don't have faith, we're never going to move. Right. So we've got to have faith, listen to the Lord and then wait on the lord for those divine strategies hmm. to get well. you know yesterday i don't know if it was during the time that you were on yesterday or it was after but i so clearly heard the words recipe of success mm. right and so yeah. it just came back to me right now as you're saying that that you do need a divine strategy right if it's not supernatural and like spooky out there kind of thing it can be the simplest thing ever it could be as simple as uh, all you got to do is go cut the neighbor's glass and say hey i'm gonna cut your glass for 20 bucks <laughs> you know it can be as simple as that but are we looking are we looking and are we listening attentively to the holy spirit saying okay i'm willing to humble myself right now is there anything that you would like me to do uh, because i'm in a dire strait right um, and so for a recipe of success, is there a method that you use yourself to wait upon mm -hmm. the Lord or anything like that? I'll give you an example of something I do, right? So this is a huge secret, okay, guys? It's, okay, it's not a secret, but it's a something that I do personally. And there's no method per se, but it is relationship with, with the Lord, okay? So uh, this is what I personally do. I will pace up and down. And I will blast in tongues while having praise music on. All right? I will praise God like crazy. And I will pray in tongues loud. And for myself, I can hear God louder when there's a lot of noise coming in. I do not know why. It's almost like I drown out everything else that's coming around my atmosphere. And my heart is so connected and I'm so in adoration so transfixed upon the Lord that my attention is just in the receiving mode. And I know that the spirit of revelation is coming on me, right? So I go and I take my pen and paper and I have it right next to me and I'm ready. The first thought that comes to my mind, that is what 
I start writing down. Right? And as soon as I do that, the next thing comes, and the next thing comes, and it builds, and it builds, and it builds. And I, I have tapped into a frequency, if I could say, or a stream of the voice of the Lord on the certain matter. So that's a strategy that I specifically make sure I do. I praise and I blast in tongues like crazy. With my pen and paper, I write the first thought, then the next thing that comes, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. However, it's got to settle in me. And sometimes it needs to linger in my head for a minute or two to say, oh, yeah, but that's actually God, and that's not just my thoughts, because my thoughts is tuned in to the radio channel of God, if you know what I'm saying. So is there something like that that you do? Well, actually, it, it depends. There are a few things. There's definitely something very similar that I do hmm. um, to what you said uh, as far as getting alone with the Lord, speaking in tongues, and then just sitting and waiting on the Lord to hear, just to, just to quiet yourself, quiet your own voice, right? Because we have our voice, we have our thoughts. And so you get to a place where you have to quiet yourself, quiet your own mind. And you just begin to speak in tongues and listen for the Lord, right? So that's one thing. And then depending on what it is, um, I may take an entire day. I may say, okay, this is a very special need right yeah. now. And I'll take a day and I'll fast. Yes. And more often than not, I can tell you that any time that there's a special need that I feel that I need to fast for, mm -hmm. after I fasted almost that very next day, I'll see the, the result of that need being met. Mm -hmm. right? That's so Whatever true. The, yeah. the thing is. And, I've, and I've had that happen both for uh, monetary needs. I've had that happen uh, for other people that I've been praying for, maybe for healing. And they'll say, mm -hmm. man, suddenly I was healed. Hmm. Etc. So I believe that that's also a key. And that goes back to what you mentioned earlier. You see, Jesus himself, he humbled himself, right? And so when we humble ourselves before the Lord, yeah. it touches the heart of God. It literally touches the heart of God when we hmm. humble ourselves before the Lord. So taking that day of fasting yeah. and allowing God to move while we humble ourselves before him, it really does produce and yield an extraordinary result. This is so good, man. Thank you so much. Okay, so guys, uh, keep those questions coming. All right, I just want to see there was a few questions that came in. Okay, how are we going on time? Okay, we're good. All right, so we got Madge saying, how do I test the spirits? Hmm. Well, I think, first of all, you want to, do you want me to take that or, or, or was that for you? I, I don't yeah, want to over Yeah, for, for, for you, my friend. <laughs> yeah. If I feel right. like led to add, then I'll add, but for you. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I would say understand and and know that you are you know the voice of God first, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be comfortable with knowing the voice of the Lord. Yeah. When you know the voice of the Lord and you're comfortable with the Holy Spirit, hmm. then it's very easy for you to test anything else. Because if it falls outside of the parameter of the peace that the Holy Spirit gives, and you don't have that peace that the Holy Spirit gives, then trust me, that's not coming from the Lord. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That peace, though, how would you describe that peace? Because it's not just a natural peace. Um, it comes with a different feeling. It absolutely does. I mean, I, it may feel different to everyone, right? Because that's subjective. How it feels for yeah. you may be different than how it feels for me. Hmm. But I can say, like Paul said, it is a peace that surpasses your understanding. Hmm. Meaning it is a peace that goes beyond the rational or intellect beyond yeah. your rationale beyond your intellect hmm. this is a piece that supersedes your intellect yeah, yeah. and so that is something that's settled in your heart and settled hmm. in your spirit yeah see i think that's the word for me it's a settling inside of myself where it's like i can breathe and be like okay it's not bothering me no more 
yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. that feeling of not bothering me anymore and i can think about other things it's not just a lingering thought you know or a pressure for me okay that was a really good answer my friend okay so um how do you end how do you handle the waiting time as you went along how did you end your waiting time as you end as you went along um i think they're trying to say how do you end your waiting time upon the lord oh when you're well that, again yeah. that's that's very subjective i think it just depends on on who you are and, and how the spirit leads you hmm. uh, sometimes you may want to end in praise or in song uh, again, sometimes you may want to end in your prayer language and just giving God thanks in advance. Yeah. And I find that praising the Lord and giving God thanks in advance is so helpful hmm. because it does a couple of things. One, it primes your own faith. You're giving God thanks in advance yeah. for what is about to be manifest, mm -hmm. what is about to come. So it primes your faith. And you're seeding the atmosphere. You're seeding the atmosphere with faith as you give thanks to the Lord before mm. you've actually seen the result. In fact, Jesus says that, right? Jesus said, when you pray for a thing and ask for it, give thanks as if you have already received it. That's and so this is definitely a, mm. a powerful key to receiving an answer for prayer. You know, I think that you can only truly say thank you when you feel that settling as well you know and that peace so when that peace comes in you can say yeah thank you and you hold on to that you just know that you got your answer isn't it okay that's really good okay so we have a uh, prophet lindy swanson she's asking okay Kirshen, i watched your training on something i saw the father writing a sequence of letters and numbers in the book i wrote those down i don't know what that means how do i use that in faith oh okay okay so it depends on what those numbers would mean to you right and so you would put you can go also go back to the hebrew and look at the gematria and see what that actually is right and so let's say for example it's um, a four and and a uh, 40 right let's just say a 40. so you got four which is dalit it's an open door uh in hebrew and then you have 10 which is the hand of god which is yod and combining that you have uh, 40, which is also the numerical value for mem, which is water. And so combining all of that, if you write down, you got an open door with the hand of God and you got water. Water is normally symbolic of the Holy Spirit or something like that, right? And so if you have all of those combined, you can ask the Lord, okay, where is this open door that you have your hand upon, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is leading me to or the Holy Spirit is flowing to, right? So let's say you have a different number, 777. So you just know that everything's coming into alignment. It's perfect will of God for that certain circumstance. Okay. So in, in saying all of that, those numbers have to hit you or come to you in a vision the same way. Sometimes if it's a phone number or something like that, it's totally different. But sometimes it's for our glory to seek out, seek it out because it is for the glory of kings to seek it out. Do you have anything that you want to say regarding the numbers, Father? No, you're right on. You're right on. Yeah. Okay, man. Um, yeah, so that's a really cool one. Um, okay, so is there a way to accelerate the harvest? What do we do if we feel there have been delays, even though we have planted and have faith to receive? Wow, that is a very good question. Yeah. Um, and and here's, here's the thing about that. Um, there, how can, how can I put this? You know, even in the spirit, there are times and seasons. Hmm. So when we talk about a harvest, yeah. it depends on exactly what that is, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a, there's a time when maybe a need has to be met, hmm. right? And you're like, okay, I need a divine strategy for this need to be met because this needs to be met right now yeah right but then there is a difference between meeting an immediate need versus a harvest that is yet to come hmm. so good. those those are two different things hmm. so when we're talking about meeting a need 
just as I as I said before, for a divine strategy, those are things that that have meeting immediate needs. So whether it's for yourself or or the corporate body of Christ or something like that. Yeah. But now when it comes to harvest, you know, we know that God is the Lord of the harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. Hmm. Our job is to A, be obedient, B, stay in God's presence, and C, continue in faithfulness and in faith to the Lord. Yeah. And the harvest will come. That's good, man. You know, I really want to get across to everybody that because I can feel certain things that people just want a quick prayer and it changes. Sometimes it's not always a prayer, right? Sometimes we need to apply wisdom, right? Because God is saying, hey, put your hands to work. Don't bury your talent, right? So we need to do certain things sometimes because the kingdom of God has certain wealth principles, right? And so those wealth principles are actually all embedded inside of you as well. Right, so every single person who's achieved anything in business had to use some kind of wealth principle, right? If they did it legally and correctly, ethically, and so on. So <laughs> that's that's part of the key. You got to do things with integrity, right? So um, we have someone who's also asked for praise regarding a generational spirit of poverty and illness, right? Those things can be very real, right? Yeah. So um, if you feel led right now. Um, as the Holy Spirit just tells you. Yeah, let's actually pray something to release that, to break yeah. out in the poverty um, spirit and the illness thing, because those that combined kind of tells me there is a spirit attacking it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So sometimes it's just a mindset, right? But this doesn't yeah. feel like a mindset. So, yeah, if you want to go ahead and pray. Yeah, let's pray yeah. for that. Father God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Now, Lord, your, your people are here and you see their hearts. This person is crying out for your help. You hear the cries of our hearts. And we praise you and we thank you. And you have given us such a great and bountiful, abundant inheritance. And this inheritance belongs to your child as well. So we come in agreement now with the word of God, and we declare and decree that no weapon formed against your child shall prosper. And so we break off this spirit of poverty and sickness and infirmity in, her, in the family. And we also declare that healing, restoration, and abundance come to this person and their family, Father God. Now, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. And if anyone is sick in the family now and they're believers, we just say, according to the word of the Lord, your word says that you will raise the righteous off of their sick bed. And so we stand on that promise with this believer. We stand on the promise of the word of God that you will raise them up off of their sick bed. And as we stated yesterday, the word of the Lord says, let the poor now say, I am rich. Let the weak now say, I am strong. So we just, just declare that truth over this believer, over this beloved saint, that they are now given access and receive the word of the Lord and the healing power of the Lord. And so we just declare and decree that sickness and poverty no longer has power in their lives or their bloodlines or generations anymore. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, uh, Beatrice. Um, I don't know why, as I was looking at your name, I just kept on seeing licorice. I'm not sure <laughs> what licorice is uh, or what it could mean in its spirit. But um, God bless you, uh, Beatrice. Yeah. Bless you. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just looking for any other questions. Okay, from Beatrice, uh, I would highly recommend jump into Owen Garcia's uh, thing. 
um, I did an interview with him as well, and there would be links in the description for that. You can go back and have a look at that for the cryptocurrencies. Okay, here we go. Uh, what do you ha what do you do if you are having setbacks and near success disappointments, and you have been told several times it's from your background? Hmm. Near success, but disappointing. Right. Yeah, I understand a little bit about that, but I'll let you go ahead first. Um, well, I guess there are a few things that one of the first things that I would look at is <clears throat> if you're if you're saying that you feel like you're constantly getting close to achieving a goal and then something happens and it falls through. Mm -hmm. if, if this is what you're talking about. Yeah, but the, she said uh, a jetty has said that. It's been told that it's because of his background. Um, so when you say background, do you mean like culture or culture history? or history? Something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're talking about culture or history, something like this. Okay. Yeah, virtual. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Just, just for context, right? Try, trying to figure out where we're going. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, I would really begin to seek the Lord. And I would go to the courts of heaven. I would begin to seek the Lord and go to the courts of heaven, come before the Father, and find out exactly what is going on in the courts of heaven. Hmm. Because in the courts, remember that the, that the word says that the accuser of the brethren, the accuser of the brethren, even goes before the Lord. Why? Because he's accusing us constantly mm. before the Lord. And he's trying to constantly find his way of having a legal right to bind us or to bind what belongs to us <clears throat> so that we can't get access to it. Mm. And so when we go into the courts of the Lord, we can trust the Lord and yield these things to him and ask God to move us out from this place of judgment because we belong to him that we may come before the throne of mercy and grace rather than judgment where the enemy wants to hold us so good man so there's a verse that says um enter his cause with thanksgiving and praise right and so if you have never been to the cause of heaven enter in to the courts by entering into the spirit be praying tongues worship a little bit and then try to imagine uh, entering into the courts but make sure you enter with praise and thanksgiving and then exactly as a courtroom would be in the natural that's how heaven's one is as well obviously greater because everything is just a shadow from heaven to earth and so you have a full-on legal procession there and um, you find out what's going on and you need to sometimes renounce our forefathers' sins and the mistakes yes. that they have made. And so that is a curse that could be upon the, the bloodline. And so in the process of renouncing it and coming out of agreement with that, you end up choosing to come into agreement with God says, and then you receive his blessings upon you. And all of a sudden, the generational line from you is now changed. Yeah. Okay. So we did that the other day, me and um, Apostle Alexander, and we had a phenomenal time in heaven. <laughs> was it like two or three hours? Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was a while. Yeah, it was a while. Okay. How do we get our fire back, man? Simple as that. How do we get our fire back? Josh is asking. Oh, man. Just ask for it. It's literally, it's, it's literally that simple just ask for it you know god wants to give us the desires of our heart and jesus said when we thirst and hunger after righteousness you'll be filled so if you are thirsty and hunger for the fire of god simply ask for it right mm -hmm. the lord says one will come who baptize you in fire and that's the holy spirit so all you have to do is ask for it. And I promise you, when you are thirsty and you're hungry for the righteousness of God, you're hungry for that fire, the Holy Spirit is ready to come in 
and fill you and give you yeah. and baptize you in fire. I promise you. <laughs> that baptism of fire is serious. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something, man. If you're gonna ask for a baptism of fire, your life will never be the same. I promise. I promise. Be ready for it, because it's not gonna be the same. <laughs> and and it can be in a in a situation that you're not expecting it, but God will light you a flame, bro. I promise yeah. you, He will light you a flame, and He will have you screaming at the top of your lungs. Or something like that, like for me, <laughs> in the middle of church. <laughs> it was so bad. They carried me out of church because I couldn't. I was too heavy. The, the, the weight of God was upon me. I don't know if an angel sat on me or what, but two six-foot guys could not carry me out of the church. The baptism of fire came on me. I vibrated for three days straight. Yeah. And I could not do anything. I didn't eat. Couldn't. So if you want the baptism of fire, oh my goodness, it will unlock a dimension of power and everything for you. But it will stir you up like crazy. It will. And you can never be the same. It's impossible. Uh, That's right. You know, have you had an experience like that, man? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like to be an apostle, to be a prophet, or whatever it is, fivefold, I really believe that you have to have experienced yeah. that next baptism right yes yeah absolutely yeah. Tell, yes. tell us about this story that happened with you <laughs> listen kirsten let me tell you something <laughs> when you're baptized in fire brother yeah <laughs> it's not pretty it's it's not, not, there's nothing glamorous about it i was i was crying i was speaking in tongues for hours I had snot coming down my nose, like, like yeah. it's not pretty. And guess what? You don't care you because don't care. That's true. because in that moment, you yeah. are being baptized by the fire of the Lord, and nothing mm -hmm. else matters in mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, brother, I've trust me, I, I've been there. <laughs> you know, we're just gonna end up, but I'm end and wrap this up. But I really want to say, guys, um. We're going to change that upcoming school into a challenge, right? And so that challenge is God has specifically laid on my heart to make it an ascension, glory, and power. Okay? So come to that challenge, and I guarantee that many of you are going to receive the baptism of fire. Yeah. Okay? The glory realms are going to be open to you. Many of you are going to see visions and ex encounters like you've never, ever had before. Right? Yeah. That is one thing I know that God has given me. And he specifically told me as I was waking up one morning to take my kingdom church into Zion. Mm. Straight into Zion. Start living from Zion. Right? He specifically told me that one morning. And so I have not done that uh, like as a challenge or anything like that. I've just, there's like a video or two floating around on YouTube. That uh, There's one called How to Go to Heaven right now. Uh, maybe that's the one Lindy was talking about. And um, you can start to go to heaven like that. But what's going to come for the Ascension Challenge? Just you're going to be blown away. I'm I'm like, I, it's been stirring up in me for a while now, but I just wanted to put it off. But now God is trying to get me to do it. So that's why I'm postponing the school and I'm pushing the school into that challenge in a way for the VIPs. So um yeah, it's going to be like that. All right. So um, last one, guys. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'm just going to wrap it up after that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on your heart, my brother, that you want to say as we wrap it up? Uh, well, you know what? Just as we wrap up, um, I do want to touch on something that we talked about yesterday when we were talking mm -hmm. about the healing of the heart, right? To admit, to acknowledge uh, and to give the Holy Spirit access. Yeah. And the last thing, because we've been talking about the heart and how we go before God hmm. and all these things, and it ties right into that. So once we've done those things, you know, the next thing that we need to do is to adapt and adopt. So hmm. what I mean by that is we adapt by allowing the Holy Spirit to change our outlook, to change the way we move 
in the earth realm to change the way we navigate. So we adapt, right? So we're adapting as the Holy Spirit postures us and moves us and helps us to navigate these issues. And we adopt the principles of the kingdom. So So you're going to admit, acknowledge, give access to the Holy Spirit, allow yourself to be adaptable, and then begin to adopt all of the principles of the kingdom of heaven so it flows through you. That's awesome, man. Okay, so um, did someone have anything? All right, all good. So my brother, um, you're also going to have something coming up, uh, time of prayer and things like that. Do you want to tell everybody about that really quickly? Yes, absolutely. Moving within the same flow starting Monday, I'm going to be starting a brand new YouTube channel. So if you check it now, it's not there. But when you go Monday, you will see it. Uh, and it's, it's going to be out in the building, of course. Uh, and when I start this new YouTube channel, God just put this on my heart that as we are looking to the Lord in this particular season for divine wealth creation, there mm-hmm. must also be divine debt cancellation yeah. at the same yeah. time. So starting Monday, I'm going to be doing 21 days of prayer specifically for divine debt cancellation so that the Lord can loose the chains on Mm. the people of God from all kinds of debt, whatever debt that is. And we're going to be storming heaven for 21 days for divine debt cancellation. Yeah. Can I join you, brother, for some of that? Please. (laughs) You know, I uh, I was in America in January, and uh, you had messaged me about uh, doing debt cancellation as well for the people. And uh, when I did it, oh my goodness, it was phenomenal. It was so, so good. So uh, yeah, we definitely want to do that. Um, and so guys, please check out all the stuff that my brother has, okay? Add him on Facebook as well. Um, there's links in the description. And so, uh, yeah, guys, make sure you jump into his things. He's a phenomenal man, as you can see, with an amazing anointing upon his life. All righty, guys, so um, we're going to wrap it up. Do you want to pray us out, my friend? Absolutely. Thank you. Father, we praise you and thank you so much for this time. Lord, we just give you thanks for your wisdom. And we thank you for the glory of the Lord flooding the space and flooding our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in each and every one of us. We thank you, Father God, for the gifts of the Lord being released. We thank you, Father God, for all of the many blessings, for the abundance of the Lord, and for the wisdom and divine strategies that are released to your people. Now, Father, I pray that you keep each and every one who has been part of this broadcast and those who will come and listen to the replays, that you keep them safe and that you begin to reveal yourself to them in a very personal and intimate way. We praise you and we thank you, Father, for your goodness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let all these things be done. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, brother. God bless you, Tans. Okay, so guys, uh, really fast, just to wrap it up. Um, I mentioned about the upcoming school, the Kingdom uh, School of the Power and Ability to Attain Wealth. That is changing, okay, guys? So um, there's going to be a few options, all right, that I'm giving you. It is specifically going to be a challenge going forward, right? And uh, the, the three options are you can get a full refund, okay, if you don't want to be a part of that. The second option is you can jump into the VIP, right, which will be for an entire week long. Uh, for seven days pretty much you'll get the recordings from each of the speakers as well for all of that or uh, what is the final option or you can have a one-on-one uh, time with me to for whatever you like the business uh, strategy etc all right so i will send out an email regarding that uh, so look out for that all right you guys thank you so much we love you tons and uh, yeah we're so excited for all the stuff that god has planned Really excited for the Ascension Challenge and uh, for your prayer thing as well for the debt cancellation. Praise God. What a time, man. The wealth transfer is happening. And I really feel that we need to get elevated in the spirit and learn how to steward it, learn how to do it all, you know? So, amen. Guys, please don't squander it when it comes. Please don't go buy a Ferrari or something. (laughs) All right. We love you guys. We'll catch you soon. See you guys. Bye-bye.